How's it going? Sorry, got to clean my glasses. Okay. So I'm working on a new set of journals. I think these are going to be monthly minis for April. And I think I'm just going to go French again. I might as well, you know, since I got all that new goody stuff from, from Louise. And I can't decide. I, oh, I'm thinking about doing some collaged covers with some book plates. Um, and then I, I was going to just use these. Um, one second. <clears throat> I was going to just use these as the covers. But. I don't know. I just, uh, I decided that I'm just going to use these inside the journals as pocket pages. So these aren't going to be super tiny minis, but <clears throat> they'll be relatively smallish. And then I have some other airmail envelopes that I thought I could use inside of them also. Um, you know, just to give them kind of a travel-y type of theme. And then uh, I did, at your suggestion, at y'all's y'all's suggestion, I did uh, scan some of my collages that I had done a while back with a bunch of that ephemera, uh, some you know French book pages and documents and ledger and that kind of stuff. So I just printed some of those off. And I will probably use these all these as pages and then maybe in, you know, collage on those covers, you know, partly. But what I wanted to do since I promised a long time ago that I would talk about book plates and some ideas for, for making book plates. And I've done these before. Um with uh, triple thick, but I think I'm going to use the UV resin on these because it's fun and it's super fast and it's super easy and it's like all the rage. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, these are just a couple of documents that I scanned, a couple of French documents that I scanned and printed. So I think I'm just going to work on this as my base for a collage and that's a really good way to kind of like start out a collage like if you have that sort of like blank paper syndrome where you just don't know where to start um print something like this you know just um find something you can print off and obviously this is printed large format so it's a little bit bigger than normal um, but then I pulled out, so what I want to do is I want to create a collage where just about every little piece of it is going to have some interest. Okay. So I'm going to be adding a lot of stuff on here and I may possibly scan this when it's done and then, um, you know, then I can use it again, but <clears throat> My intention is to use this, this piece in the book plates. So let me just show you kind of what I'm working with. So I've got, these are some, these are the book blocks from the little minis that I did last month. And so I'm going to use some pages out of these. This is just some of the end pages and stuff. I'm kind of going with like, excuse me, more like numbers kind of number oriented type of stuff. Um, and then I've got this book. I pulled a couple pages out of here. This is a book I just got from Louise. It's not numbery, but it does have quite a few numbers in it, like along each of these entries. Um, but oh my gosh, it's got all these really cool illustrations too. So those will add interest in my collage. And then this book you know, I don't know if I'm going to be copying this, but um, I might wind up going to prison. But I might 
you know, I'm probably going to use some pages out of this too. And I don't know if I'm going to copy this kind of collage and it's something that you want to copy or scan then you have to be sure that the things that you're using in your collage are not copyrighted and that's that's pretty important um most of the time ledger pages and that kind of stuff are not going to be copyrighted you know especially if they're from like the 1800s or whatever these books are out of print, so they're, um, so I pulled some pages out of some other like ledger type of things, mostly things that have numbers. And this is all from those French ledgers. So here's one from 1921. Um, I don't remember what the, what the like theme of that one was. But just, you know, different types of handwriting and stuff. And I love these little stamps that are on here. This was from a um, uh, a notary, this book. So these are all, like, official notary, like, seals or whatever. And, yeah, so there, I pulled a couple pages that had a lot of writing. Yeah, like this page. So I'm just going to be using, like small pieces of, of these and sort of just making a big, you know, messy type of thing. And then there's also a page from this, um, this was like a, an engineering, someone's engineering notes. Okay. So look at all those numbery things. And then a page from a ledger, which I don't know what it was all about either, but Lots of, lots of cool stuff in there. And then, of course, I've got, you know, tons of other little doodads, you know, that I can, I can tear off little pieces and, and use. Um, and then, like, some documents and stuff like that. So, yeah, so I'm just going to try to, to really fill this up and <clears throat> remembering that I'm just going to be using little pieces of this, okay? So, and it's nice to have this background to sort of work with. So I want to just add, I'm just going to add little pieces all over it. And I'm not even going to really be too concerned about whether or not they're upright or you know, in the right direction. Gotta have a baby wipe. Oh my God, this is so funny. Well, actually, it's not really funny, but um, Conrad, my oldest son, he's um, Declan's dad, my, my grandson's dad. He he called me yesterday and he was like, do you have any baby wipes? You know, and he said that he can't find baby wipes in the store. Just like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Like people are using the baby wipes. They're, there's no toilet paper, so they're buying all the baby wipes. I hope all of their toilets clog up. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Like, if you can't find baby wipes, you or if you can't find toilet paper, you got to use something. But I bet a lot of people's toilets are going to be clogged. So I'm just using this little little calculation. I'll stick it up there in the corner. And I do want to sort of try to. try to, uh, you know, use some different, different tones of paper, colors of paper. It's not really colors, but different, different tones, darker and lighter and different textures and stuff. And just, just really fill this up. 
it's kind of relaxing, you know, just and mindless. Just uh, tearing paper and gluing it here and there. Always try to turn it around, turn the page over too, and look at the back because it's different on the back. This may wind up being a pretty long video. <laughs> I guess that's okay. Anyway, so I had, I happened to have a bunch of baby wipes that I told him he could have like six packages of baby wipes. And, um, yeah, anyway, it's crazy, crazy times we're living in. So I'm just going to tear this whole strip of of numbers and I'm going to glue that. No, I don't want it on that side. I'm just going to glue it right there. So I would like to maybe be able to scan this. So I don't know if I'm going to use those pages from the, um, that city guide book because that was printed in like the 60s i don't want to cover that up i think that's kind of cool so i'm just going to stick this up here no i'll put it like that so i am going to do my drawing tomorrow i've got the the playing card video you know wink wink is up until i'm gonna leave it i mean i'm just gonna leave the video up but it'll be closed as of midnight tonight okay guys so um so if you want to watch that video i would recommend it and listen to the instructions <laughs> and then leave a comment wink wink oh i keep going to the same area i need to move around okay so i'm trying to cover up this little bit of white too Okay, let's get some of this in there. I've been watching this um, YouTube channel that is like all about uh, restoring old houses. And it's really cool. It's fun to watch. Well, it's not just houses. It's like um, some of the buildings that they're restoring. They're all in the UK, pretty much. Um, but some of the buildings that they're restoring are just like really weird. Uh, what's the name of the channel? It's Real Truth History Documentaries is the name of the channel. And it's just really cool. They just... Um, they just go and they do like before and after, you know, of all of these different buildings. And there's one that's called, or there's one guy, some of the videos are done by this one guy, Restoration Man. And he might have his own channel too, I'm not sure. And then some are also by this, this lady that does the, the, does the, um, you know, like the interviewing and stuff. But it's really cool to see what these people are doing to these buildings and how they're restoring them. And like old, like they did an old water tower. And um, 
like a, what was one of the other ones? Oh, uh, an ice, an ice like building that was, you know, used for, for storing ice along this river. An ice house. Yeah, an ice house. And this guy made it into his house. Like, he lives in this, in this ice house. And it's like underground, sort of, you know. <clears throat> so I'm not really like... I mean, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not putting the same stuff like right next to itself on the pages here, but, and trying to just kind of spread it out across the whole, the whole collage, you know, I'm going to try to use some of these numbers too. But I am looking for numbers. That's kind of what. What I'm trying to get across here. Okay. And then. This paper is so nice. It's nice and it's just got such a great texture. Don't you love the sound of paper tearing? Let's see. There we go. Okay, so that looks, I think that looks pretty good as far as coverage. And then I'm going to come back and just add some other little like details and stuff. Some other little bits here and there. What's that? I'm just going to put this little strip right along the bottom here. Okay. Let me clear some of this stuff out of the way. I do have this one. I don't really think I need to use any of this one, though. I think I have enough on there for now. And then I have some other little documents and stuff. Um, they have little details that I really like. Like, like this. I think that's really cool. So I'm just going to just going to glue it down somewhere or some other stuff here. That's kind of neat. That little strip. That over here on the edge. There's this little stamp on the back. Let's get that in there. <laughs> There's probably people that would just die if they saw me tearing this up. I like that red writing. 
I think it's neat. So I'm going to just stick it on here somewhere. About right there on that edge. Actually, let's just do part of it. Yeah, this is going to be a super long video. But, eh, who cares, right? Who cares? Okay, and then that one I'll put up there. So since, since I printed something on this paper, I don't feel like I'm wasting it. You know what I mean? Like I'm not wasting that perfectly good um, piece of, of ledger paper by covering it up with all of this extra weird stuff, you know? Um, I like the writing on this one, so I'm just going to put a strip of it. A skinny strip. Whoops. Over here. This page has like some purple, which I think is pretty cool. I turned it upside down. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. Okay. So that. I love this. It's so grungy. Um, I'm going to put that over here. So this should actually, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not using a ton of glue. I think it'll dry pretty quick. Um, and hopefully I can figure out how to, how to show you guys this whole process so that it actually works um, without having to wait in between. Like hopefully this can dry while I'm talking about something else. Okay, so these are those little raffle tickets that are from a fishing society <laughs> I learned I didn't know what they were or I for had forgotten what it said in the listing uh, apparently it's a fishing society and they had a raffle and these must be tickets they didn't sell so yeah funny that somebody would hang on to them for that long. Okay, this one can go over here. And because I know somebody will ask uh, why I use the baby wipes. Um, I use the baby wipes to clean up, to like wipe down the excess glue and to smooth down the paper. And I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, um, it seems like the, um, the moisture in the glue or in the baby wipe kind of helps to create a better like seal with the with the glue i don't know why maybe maybe because it's a water based glue or something or i don't know but that's just what it seems like to me and my hands don't get covered with glue so, yeah, so I like that. I'm not going to use those. Okay, so this is all, except for, you know, this little bit of white, which, let me just go ahead and, and cover it up. Because it will drive me nuts.
it'll drive me crazy. Hold on. Just a second. Yeah, that's why I use the baby wipes. Um, for lots of reasons. Plus, I'm kind of like addicted to them. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm kind of just used to using them. It just seems so much easier to smooth down paper with something that's slightly damp. And, it, you know, I can clean my hands like regularly. And I don't know. I suppose I could probably use fewer baby wipes if I, um, if I sprayed them, but if I like got them wet again, like with, with a spray bottle or something, but they're, they get covered with so much glue that I don't really want to do that. So I don't know, maybe it's wasteful. Okay. I might want to use another one of these raffle tickets. Um, Let's use these little bits off of this postcard. Whoops. <laughs> There's a stamp on that side. Hold on. I gotta glue this on the other side. <laughs> now it's getting super gluey. That's probably upside down. There, I'll put it that way and then it won't matter. I hope you guys can see this. So if you can, hopefully you can, I'm looking at the screen and it looks like you should be able to see it pretty well. Um, so basically what I'm trying to create is more of just a texture, just like an overall um, texture for this, for this piece of paper. Like it's sort of like, you know, I just created a new, um, like pattern paper, you know, um, using just different little bits of, of handwriting and printed text and that kind of stuff. So that's, that's sort of what my, my idea is my, or my, my thinking. And then some of you guys are probably just going to die, but I want to use some of these ration stamps on here. So these are the little ration stamps that I got from Louise. And they're, a lot of them are for uh, textiles, for fabric and stuff. And they're just, oh, they're just really cool. So I sort of feel like since um since I bought them I can do whatever I want, right? But um <laughs> in a way it's like preserving them and and like admiring them by using them on my on my art, you know? As part of my art. Plus, they have numbers. They have numbers on them, you know? So that makes them fair game. It's kind of folded over there. Um...
see. Put a little bit up here in this corner. So instead of, you know, instead of trying to put glue on the back of this, I'm just sort of putting glue all over that whole area just to be sure it just to be sure it grabs and then using the baby wipe I will smooth it all down. Okay, need a little bit more over here maybe. I like these, these really dark ones. Let's see. Yeah, it needed a, it needs a little bit of contrast. Like, so right now it's got, you know, it's all sort of a similar tone. So I want to try to start adding some more contrast. Like these numbers are kind of, they're darker and, um, Some of these have little patterns on them and stuff. You know, like these have a little background, almost like a watermark pattern on them. So I think that's cool. Whoops, I don't want to put it right there. I always kind of like go for the same area with certain things. Okay. So this was like a ration book. Part of a ration book or whatever you call it. Stamp book or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to use a piece of that, I think. And this, um, actually, you know what? I'm going to tear off this outside border of that. There. This Amazon Basics glue is pretty good. Been using it a lot lately, and um, I really like it. Seems pretty reliable. I don't know how it works on um, like glossy surfaces, you know. So I've had people comment about that and they say that, you know, if you want to use this like a glue stick on something that has like a glossy surface that they, um, they've been just kind of sanding it a little bit with some, you know, some sandpaper. I love this yellow. This is what I bought these for, you know. This is what I wanted to do with these little stamps was just use them in little little collages for little things like tiles and for these book plates and um and whatnot. Okay. So then these are some other little stamps that I got from Louise. I can't remember what they were for. Um, but I kind of like how they're in these strips. So I'm just going to keep them in their strips. Or I like how they're all connected. So I'm just going to keep them in there. And then let's see, I'll use a, I can't remember what these were. It's <laughs> trying to find a place where I need something. How about right there? Let's 
So see, it's really like getting getting filled up quite a bit. And I mean, I wouldn't normally um, do this, you know, but but I think it's kind of cool. It's you'll see, you'll see. I just want. Oh, right there. It's kind of like when I'm making a, a sheet that I'm going to do tags, you know. Um, I just try to evenly sort of disperse things on the page. Okay. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> that seems like plenty of contrast, you know, it's not, um, there isn't any one particular thing that pulls your attention either. It's pretty well balanced, I think. So let me stick this stuff back in here. Back in its bag. I don't want to use those. I love these for this kind of stuff. Um, they're awesome, awesome. Um, and I might do a couple more of these. I don't know. But, okay. So this is the base of... of you know, what we need. Okay. <clears throat> so you can get book plates lots of different places, right? These are the Tim Holtz ones. I think he has a couple other styles of, of book plates that, that you can buy. Um, but these are nice. They're very ornate and kind of fancy. Um, and then I have this box of um these are actually stamping up book plates i got these uh when we did the auction for scotty um so you could use these um so if you use something like this where there's like kind of a weird shape um you basically just want to trace around that on the inside with a pencil and then you can just cut it out like, you know, and ever so slightly on the outside of that tracing to get your shape. Um, circles, obviously, you know, you can use a hole punch or whatever. So I don't necessarily like that silver. So what I did was I just took some of this. Um, it's this uh, vintage. It's made by Ranger. I don't know what the darn brand name is. It's got like three different brands on it. Vintage Patina for all metal. Uh, it is made by Ranger, but it's for, it's made for metal. So, so it'll, it'll actually stick on the metal. It's not like regular acrylic paint where, you know, it'll just like peel off. Um, it's permanent on metal. So I just used a little um, just a little dauber and it dries pretty quick too. Obviously you can use other stuff. You don't, you know, it, you can even spray paint these with like Rust-Oleum or something. Um, but this is, I have this and it's nice to just be able to paint something tiny that's metal and it also dries really fast. So, or alcohol inks, you could use alcohol inks, all kinds of things. You can, you know, um, you can color metal with all kinds of different things. So, so I just did those like that, um, with this patina because I think I'm going to go over them again, um, with some like Gilder's wax. Or some of that ink of gold, you know, because I kind of like 
the way it looks. Where's those other ones? So this is the package for that paint, for this paint. And I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was $4.99 with a coupon, you know, like $3. So I also have a bunch of these book plates that I cut out on my scan and cut. And the pattern was in the software and the machine. So that was cool. Um, somebody also sent me some book, some book plates that they cut out on their die machine, on their die cutting machine. I don't remember who it was because they sent them to me a long time ago. But just out of lightweight chipboard um, from a Cheerios box. So, you know, I like these because they're not real thick. And I think... I think they would be nice to use on, you know, like softer journals too, like thinner, smaller journals. So anyways, these, all these ones that I had cut out, um, with the scanning cut, I painted them black a long time ago. I don't remember what I used to paint them black with, but what I thought would be kind of cool. And I do actually like it is, um, to then go over the black with like the gilders gilding wax gilders yeah gilders paste wax and <clears throat> i'm just gonna do that so if you do have some of this stuff um this is made by um well you can buy it at gilderspaste.com so Sounds to me like that's the manufacturer. Gilder's Paste. Oh, manufactured by Artist Supplies and Products. <laughs> anyway, so I just use my finger. But you don't want to... Don't do this on a surface that you really care about. Because it, um, it will dry kind of like permanent... I cleaned it off my desk with uh, with rubbing alcohol, but it wasn't easy to get off. So I just go. To, I just went over that just a little bit with some of that that wax, and I thought that looks kind of cool, you know. Like I left sort of um, sort of distressed, you know. So the black kind of comes through, and um, it's not like super high um, metallic, but a little bit. And I, back when I painted these, I made sure I got the edges really well. So, um, so the edges are nice and, and, you know, black. So anyway, so there's the Gilders wax. And then also I thought this would be really cool to use with, um, Inca gold. So just use my finger. I always use my finger with this stuff. And um, sort of smear it around. And this is water-based. So if you have Inca Gold that um, dries up, don't even bother putting the baby wipe in there and trying to keep it damp and all that. It just, it, it doesn't really work that well. <laughs> um, you might as well just go ahead and like let them dry out. And then when you want to use them, just spray it with some water. That's what I did. I just, you know, it, it was totally dry. It was like rock hard 20 minutes ago. And I just squirted a couple squirts of water in there and put the lid back on and and now I can use it so anyway so that and then you know just just different different uh I mean the stuff comes in so many different colors that um and I thought it would look kind of neat on I'm gonna try it on this metal on the patina and see how it looks
and since it is a paint like it it will dry on there I suppose if you were worried about it like coming off or flaking off you could always spray it with some kind of clear coat or something you know oh my gosh my hands are a mess um but yeah I think that looks kind of cool sort of distressed looking and I like the black um like underpainting you know the Tim Holtz ones, um, you know, you could always paint those too and, and color them. I'm gonna, I'm just going to do this one too while I'm doing it. Um, you could always alter the color of those as well. Obviously, I mean, you can do whatever you want, right? So this is silver. Let's see how it looks. I always forget about my ink of gold. I used to use it all the time and then sort of stopped and rediscovering my ink of gold. Inca gold. Okay, so there. See? It's kind of cool. So you could you could, you know, I could spray that with a clear coat and kind of just seal it just to be sure that it doesn't, you know, come off. Excuse me. Okay. So that's, that's that. That's the, you know, basically the book plates. So <clears throat> if you are planning to, you know, if you have a die cut machine and you're going to cut out some book plate shapes, um, you know, if you can change the size of them, that would be cool. Do like different sizes, like real small ones. And then maybe even, maybe even do some like really big ones. But, um, yeah, so there's all different types of book plates that you can, you can get and use. Um, I really like these now that I've, d I've decided to paint them. I like them. I didn't like them at first cause they were just too like bright silver, you know? Um, okay. All right. Where are we? And I totally forgot that. I wanted to do some stamping on this collage. So let me just do that really quick. Totally forgot. So I got this um, stays on blazing red. And <laughs> I haven't actually tried it yet on this kind of thing, but, um, hmm. oh, you know what? I still have black on there. Oops. Let's see. I'm not sure if I like this color, you know? Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty good. I think I like it. So, you know, if people have said that they have a hard time with, like, lining these up um, to use them and that they feel like it's just too hard to, to line them up. You, you just kind of get used to it. You know what I mean? Like, with practice, you sort of, you sort of just figure it out like you just figure out like sometimes I like to turn it around that way because that way the edge of the stamp is like closer to the edge and I don't know I just don't really have too much trouble with with finding what I want to stamp the label around let me do one more okay yeah I kind of like that color that blazing red it's not bad I have a couple other reds that I want to compare it with too. I'm trying to get as close to that, um, you know, the, the Denison label red. They should make that a color. Somebody should make that a, a, a color. And then also, 
gosh, I'm glad I went back. So I've got these little stencils that I can do some other numbers. This is an old Stanford stamp pad that I got. I don't know where it came from, but um, it was totally dry. There was no ink on it at all when I got it. So it was like brand new. And so I just, just flooded it with, um, with vintage photo. <laughs> yeah, see, I can put numbers all over this. Just really want numbers. <laughs> Yeah, that looks so cool. I love these little stencils. Let's see. About right there. These are just makeup brushes, you know. This one's the concealer brush. Let's do that one right there. Oh, no, I just did. Well... so fun um and then of course there are i have the larger um the larger stencil numbers so i could do i don't know i could do a couple of these but really i don't i don't want these giant i want like smaller numbers because this is for like a smaller application you know but that does look pretty cool that does look pretty cool there's a number two just kind of tap it on there Okay, I don't want to do too many of those. I might add some more later. Anyway, so little stencils. And then, of course, number stamps. I've got these little, um, these are like Cavallini uh, number stamps. So I could add some in different colors and stuff too, like some red numbers or, or whatever. Anyway, so moving forward. <laughs> um... Oh my God, I have so much stuff on my desk. So basically what I want to do is just take my little book plate and sort of frame little bits, little pieces of this collage and, you know, just, just cut these out. Um... Just, just, you know what I mean? So I just want to frame little pieces and I want, I want to do it more randomly than I'm doing it, but that's kind of the, the idea. So I'm actually going to trace this on the outside. I should scan this. <laughs> um... Oh, I should actually make sure my pencil is working before I do that. Okay. So I'm tracing the outside of the book plate. And you know what? You could make book plates pretty easily too. Um, You know what? I don't want to cut that yet. I want to scan it first. So let me grab, I have another one that I did earlier. So this one is a little bit different, but I don't want to, I don't want to cut that one yet until I scan it. Um, so this is actually a scanned piece.
so I can really mark it up and it and it doesn't matter. Okay, so now I can actually see it too because I was having a hard time seeing it on there. Okay, so I just made some marks along the outside edge. So I'm just going to cut inside those marks ever so slightly. You guys know what I'm doing. You get the idea, right? <clears throat> And then, yeah, it's just a little book plate. So what I would do first, though, well, I want to make sure this is going to work, okay? Um, since I'm going to use the UV gel in this uh, to coat this, this has to be heavier. This That has to be a lot thicker. So <clears throat> I'm going to glue this down. To so this is some real heavy duty craft card stock. Use a relatively generous amount of glue and glue that onto the card stock. And then cut it out again. You want it to have a firm base um, because as the gel is, um, as the resin is, is setting, as it's curing, it'll kind of start to warp. So you do want to have something that's relatively firm, okay? So then I'm going to glue this onto this. Um, I like to put the glue right around the edge of the opening on the inside because it does actually create like a, a barrier, especially the art glitter glue. I think the art glitter glue has rubber in it. I think it has some kind of liquid rubber or something um, because it's really plasticky. Anyways, but it works pretty good for this. So it's going to seal that around the inside edge just in case any of that resin tries to leak through, tries to leak under. Okay, so just kind of cleaning up any of the excess glue that smushes in. So there, yeah. And then, you know, if you want to, you could add some other stuff in there. Like you could add like a little word or like a little pressed flower or, you know, you could even stamp some letters or numbers in there now. Um, cut out like a little word and put it in there. Um, you know, I have a couple that I did earlier. This one, I didn't add anything. And... I put the gel in it or the, the um, UV resin in there and did it already. Okay, so this is one that I did earlier. I haven't added the, I don't know why. I didn't add the um, craft paper to it, like a dingling. Hold on, hold the phone. You just want to give it some kind of stiffness. It's got to be sort of sturdy. And then you do want to make sure that you let everything dry pretty well um, before you try to, to do the resin. Um, I don't feel like any of the glue that I just put on there is going to come in contact with the resin since there's a layer of paper in between it, but we'll just see, but <clears throat> you do kind of want to make sure that everything is dry. So I'm not going to do this one yet, but I do want to make sure that that layer of glue is all sealed up. 
and and dry so just you know you guys know how fast art glitter glue dries it's it's pretty quick so i would say maybe a half an hour 45 minutes and um and it should be dry okay so if you have never used uh uv resin it's actually pretty cool and i think i'm gonna be using it a lot more um this is the brand that i got it's Limino is the brand name. I got it on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. It was about $15 for this bottle. Um, this is a 200 gram bottle, which is a sort of a large size bottle. Um, a lot of them are like 100 grams. So pay attention to that when you buy it. Um, if you see that a price is, you know, exceptionally high, look at what the quantity is. And it might be, you know, like, 500 grams or something. Anyways, so it's about $15. It comes in a black bottle because it's UV light activates it and causes it to, excuse me, causes it to set up. <clears throat> so it's stored in a, you know, black bottle. So it doesn't get any, any light, any UV rays. You don't have to have a UV light to, um, mm -hmm to cure it you can actually if it's a sunny day you can take it outside and let it cure it takes um they say like two to three minutes under a uv light to cure uh out in the sun it takes about 15 to 20 minutes so you know either way you can do it um but i bought this this lamp on amazon also it was also about 15 dollars so I, I felt like it was a pretty good deal. Um, this is a, I don't remember, I think it's six watts, something like that. It's just like, it's just a silly little light, you know, I and mean, you can do your nails and stuff, you know, anyway. Um, okay, so I'm going to take this little, this is one that I did earlier, like I said, and then I kind of made these little, these little trays. <laughs> I cut off the corners. Um, so that I can slide things in and out real easily. And then I've been doing like the bazels, you know, and those have a loop on them. So I just glued an extra piece of, of board on there so that when I lay stuff on here that the little ring on the bazel doesn't make it go crooked. So it, it just kind of compensates for that. But anyway, I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to lay it on my little my little slider and then I use these dental tools for all kinds of stuff but you really want to make sure that this is laying flat okay you you do want it to be pretty flat and then just squirt the the gel or the yeah the resin I'd say you know, that much. Um, you don't really need this to be super thick. Um, it'll kind of just level itself out in here, but I like to take the, since I don't want to worry about air bubbles so much, I like to sort of um, make it as thin as I can to still get the same look, you know. Um Anyway, so I'm just trying to keep it inside the little frame. And just using this little pick to spread it right out to the edges. And these are pretty thin too. So um, on the metal ones, like on these, it's so, it's so thick, like the, it's so deep that you know, you can just squirt a bunch in there and it'll just level itself out. Anyway, so just want to make sure that it's kind of spread all the way out to all the edges. And then just give it a minute. See if any air bubbles pop up. You can use your, um, your heat gun to pop bubbles or just use this little, little pokey tool or toothpick or a lighter or something. Um, 
or a blowtorch, you know. <laughs> anyway, no, don't use a blowtorch. Anyways, and then just slide it in here. And this has 30, 60, and 90 seconds. So I'm going to put it on 90 seconds. Make sure you put your lid on this before you turn the light on, just in case light leaks in there. Yeah, and then you just wait. Um, this is one I did earlier. It... <laughs> I'm not sure what happened, but I think that I need to set it a little longer because I think some of the, the gel is not really set in there. If you, if I push on it, like I can see it kind of moving. I only sat this for two and a half minutes. Um, so it's not perfect. I'm just going to set it. I'll do, actually, I'm just going to put it under there again while I'm doing this one. Um, this one worked really well, except for that, the, there's a word, it says details on that little piece of paper in there, but you can't read it. <laughs> I mean, you can, like I can read it here, but you can't see it very well. Anyway, I forgot that the paper would get darker when it got wet with the resin, but I think they come out pretty cool, you know? And then, so this is why I wanted to have lots and lots of details on that collage so that you know you could get some interest in this little tiny little tiny space you know and if you just you know collage a whole large piece with lots of little details then it sort of doesn't really matter where you you know put your put your little frame you're gonna find something that you like you know what I mean so yeah, so I did that for 90 seconds. I'm going to do it for another 90 seconds. And hopefully that'll be long enough. Actually, let me pull this one out. Yeah, that actually did do it. It was still a little bit uh, wet in there. So cool. <coughs> So this one on the paper, it's staying pretty flat. Um, this one, I did not do the paper backing on it, and it really warped as it was curing it because it kind of shrinks. So, you know, and I but I was able to kind of get it flattened out a little bit too just by sort of slowly bending it. But... <clears throat> I'll tell you what, it's a heck of a lot faster than using um, like triple thick or um, glossy accents or whatever to accomplish the same, the same goal, right? Okay, I'm going to pull this out because this is not real thick. So there you go. And it's super fast and it's not hot and it's set like it's. I don't want to touch it because it's just ever so slightly warm and it might leave a fingerprint, but yeah, it's definitely set. And as it cools and, you know, it'll cure just a little bit more, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's done. Isn't that cool? I love it. Um, yeah, so there's some little book plates and I think these will be really cute on the front of these new journals. Not sure if I'll be using those, but I definitely want to use these. So anyway, I know that was a super long video, but that's okay. What else do you guys have to do? <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to keep working on these. I think I am going to scan this um, just because I don't think there's anything on here that's going to get me in deep trouble. So yeah. Anyway. All right, you guys. I love you. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.